Now, I want to expand the idea of angular momentum from one point object that moves in space to an object like a sphere or like a disk, which is rotating about its center of mass. And I will start with a disk. Here we have a disk. The disk has mass m, and the disk has radius r, and at this point c is the center of mass of this disk. It's rotating with angular velocity omega, and I want to know what the angular momentum is of this rotating disk. The direction of the angular momentum is going to be trivial. If it's rotating like this, if you take here a little mass element, mass m of i, this is the position vector r of i relative to that point c, and here you have the velocity v of i, then you see immediately that r cross v is coming out of the blackboard, so that's easy. Angular momentum will be in this direction, but what is the magnitude of the disk as a whole? Well, let's first calculate what the angular momentum is of this little mass element about this point. So L of C for mass element I equals, oh, let's just only worry about magnitudes because already we know the direction. So that is M of I, and then the cross product between R of I and V of I, but this angle is 90 degrees, so I can forget about the sine of theta, so I simply get R of I, V of I. R of I relative to that point C times V of I. This is the magnitude. Now I hate to see a V of I in a rotating disk because the velocity will depend on how far you are away from the center. The velocity here is zero. However, they all have omega in common. Every single element that you choose has the same omega, so I'm always going to replace in a case like this V by omega R. And so this then becomes M of I, R of I of C, I get a square here, and I get omega. So I wrote down V equals omega R, which of course holds in general. It would have been better perhaps if I had written down V of I equals omega times R of I, because each element little i, which has a position vector R of I, has a velocity which is given by V of I equals omega R of I. But I condense that sort of in one equation, V equals omega R. But this is the connection that will make it perhaps easier for you to understand what follows. So that is the angular momentum for this little mass element. But now I want to know what the entire angular momentum is about that point C, is an axis going through the center of mass, to the center of the disk perpendicular to the blackboard. And now, of course, I have to do the summation of all these elements i. I can bring the omega outside, and I would have then the summation of m of i, r of i, relative to that point c squared. And you see immediately, I hope that you see immediately, that this is the moment of inertia for a spin around the center of mass through that point c. And so I can write for this I of C times omega. Now comes the question, so this is the magnitude. Now comes the question, is this angular momentum different, for instance, for this point A? And your first reaction will be, yeah, of course, because it depends on the point you choose. Well, the remarkable thing is that if you have a rotation about the center of mass, which I have chosen here, then even if you calculate the angular momentum relative to this point or any other point, even this point in space, you will always find the same answer. But only in case that there is a rotation about the center of mass. And we call that the spin angular momentum. The spin angular momentum is an intrinsic property of an object, regardless of which point you choose relative to which you calculate the angular momentum. So in the case that an object is spinning about its center of mass, you no longer have to specify the point that you have chosen, your point of origin. You can really talk now about the angular momentum. 
The Earth is spinning about its center of mass. So the Earth has an intrinsic spin angular momentum. In addition, it has an orbital angular momentum. If you want to talk about the orbital angular momentum of the Earth, however, you better do it relative to that point, otherwise it would be changing in time. It's only uniquely defined if you take this special point, because only about that point, which is the location of the Sun, is the angular momentum, the orbital angular momentum of the Earth not changing. 